and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're all today, hope you're feeling grand, and all is well in your world, and I'm eating my beard. It's not a healthy diet. This will be going soon, anyway, people of tube, I will be very clean, well, I'll be fresh-faced soon, but then it'll grow back. Like the fungus it is. Anyway, weird enough aside. Hello. Uh, today's vid, everybody. Uh, let's get past the beard weirdness and uh, let's get on with the video. Uh, today's video is, well, it could be entitled My Favourite John Fashani Chord Progressions, but I might change that title yet. I don't know what I'm going to call this video yet. But basically, in this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk through some of my favourite John progressions and why I love them so much. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's basically what we're going to do today. It's not going to be really kind of like an in-depth kind of thing on the theory side of things, but it's just going to be talking about it and like, you know, how John uses them and why, you know, and stuff like that. What, what, why I think, should I say, because I don't know the man, but, uh, either way. So, here we go. So, uh, so I'm going to start with this chord progression. This is kind of like, this is a very kind of like staple kind of, it's a very accessible chord progression you know you can you can hear a lot of melody in it, it it's very very friendly is, is is the only word i can really use and this is kind of used in the by the way outro jam at uh at hyde park and also in other places here and there which i can't think of because i'm an idiot right now uh but it's this chord progression so it's d minor b flat major f major and c major and it kind of goes like that And the reason I love that chord progression so much is it's just there's so much room for expression over it. It's four chords, uh, so it's in the key of D minor. You don't have to, you know, all the chords coming out of coming out of that uh, key of F major, D minor, whatever. Uh, again, I'm not the biggest theory nut here, so if I get something wrong theoretical, which I probably will, that's why. Anyway, um, but I just love the the simplicity of it. Like if you create a loop of that chord progression. There's so much you can do over that. Again, I'm just kind of playing it cleanly. Whack on distortion. You can do so much with it. And it really gives you a lot of room for expression. And I think that's why a lot of John's chord progressions are fairly simple and very melodic. You know, uh, they're very, very musical. Is because it gives him a lot of room for expression and also a lot of use of melody as well. You know, not just in singing, but in the guitar as well. So that's kind of like the first kind of progression I like. You know, I want to kind of like use as an example in, in this video because it's just amazing. He can do it in that kind of like two note thing as well that John does. That you know, you can do so much with it. You can play the uh, F and the C lower. You, know, you can do the, the do a, a G note over C major, so you can go. It, it's just an extremely accessible, melodic, gorgeous chord progression, and it's one of my favourite progressions that John's ever done. And I remember uh, the first time I, I I was actually at the Hyde Park gig when I first saw him doing that. And, um, or was it on the radio I heard it first? It could have been actually the... Because when the Chili Peppers did the Hyde Park shows, they did broadcast uh, I, one. I'm pretty sure it's before I went. Well, it must have been before I went because I went to the last ever one. Um, they broadcasted it on, on, on radio. And I, I must have heard it the first time then. But I remember very clearly uh, in my head when I was at the Hyde Park shows, they finished, by the way, and John started that... <laughs> And immediately, and, and funny enough as well, it was great because on the big screens you could see John's hands, and I learnt it then and there. I was just, I, mes I I memorized it and was mesmerized at the same time, and I learned it. And it was just one of those core progressions that I love to come back to. 
And uh, this actually came up in an A&Q a while back. Uh, somebody said, do I have go-to chord progression to take John Fashanti tone? And uh, that is probably number one. Because it's just so nice to play it. It's like Nutshell by Alice in Chains. It's just got... There's certain chord progressions that just feel lovely to play. And that's one of them. So again, just to recap, it's a D minor, B flat major, F major, and C major. And again, playing, you can just, you can play over it in just like your D minor pentatonic scale. So just using them notes, you can create so many melodies. Oh. That's a dodgy patch lead. One second. That's the only thing that gets me about the Boss RC10 Looper is it's really hard to stop. Anyway, but you can do so much with it just with pentatonics. I mean, yeah, you, know, you, can, you can bend and go to that note there, but there's just so much you can do with it. It's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Okay, so that's chord progression number one that I want to kind of show today. So that's a chord progression that John uses quite a lot. Okay, so the flip side of his chord progression is, uh, as an example, the chorus of Look On. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna stick in the key of D minor. Uh, uh, look on is in C sharp minor, but we're gonna stick to D minor here because basically instead of starting on the D minor, in look on John starts on the uh, the second chord of a chord progression. So this time we'll go B flat, D minor, F major, and then C ma C major. So instead of going D. <laughs> Reverse it and go B first. And again, it's tons and tons of uh, expression in that one. So, D minor pentatonics again. You know, again, simple, but extremely expressive and melodic. It's just gorgeous. It's simplicity in the best way. And again, John's John knows about this stuff. You know, even if he doesn't know, no, which I think he does, he knows in him in his being. You know, he he just knows how to make something that gets you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it doesn't get everybody, but you know, it, it's one of those things. You know, and if and if you're watching this video, it get you know, it'll get you. But like, it's one of those things. Uh, these chord progressions that I hear, they just they pull me in, and they just keep me, keep hold of me in a nice way. It's not kind of like a threatening kind of I'm gonna knock your lights out. It's like a really let me just hug you for a while. For about four minutes and then I'll let you go and you'll be better for it. It's that kind of thing. A uh, bit of a weird example, but you know what I mean? Uh, it feels nice, you know, and they feel nice to play and they feel nice to play over. You know, I don't get bored of playing guitar solos or, um, or, or, or just trying to get over uh, different melodies and stuff like that over these chord progressions. They're just so nice to play. And it's another progression that you can just play all day. And again, you can do it in a two note way. <laughs> You can do like more Jimi Hendrixy. Yeah, you can do all sorts with it. Again, John been a massive Jimi Hendrix fan. It's no wonder these chord progressions can do that thing. And you know, yeah, there's so much you can do with these progressions. And again, it's just a flip, basically just one chord flipped. Instead of starting on the D, you're starting on the B. You know, it, it, it's just just gorgeous it's so cool okay so uh that's another chord progression that i really like and again it's kind of a flip-flop of the first one really uh okay so moving on i'm going to move to key of e minor now so that's d minor which is a key that john does use quite a lot 
We're going to use to move to E minor now. One of my favorite chord progressions that John does when he's in E minor. It does do it in D as well, but one of my favorite chord progressions in E minor is this. <laughs> Which is E minor, G major, D major, and C major. And I could have lied, Wet Sand, uh, She Looks To Me, uh, probably countless other songs that I can't think of at this point in time. You know, uh, that's it. You know, it's I could have lied, that, uh, chorus, it's uh, the, mi the midsection of uh, Wet Sand. Again, it's, it's kind of like that chorus of She Looks To Me. That's in F sharp minor though, not E minor. Um, but that pattern, it, John uses that a lot, you know, it, it's a very w widely used pattern as well. You know, it's, it's, it's also, um, well, apart from one chord, it's Black Summer. But John goes to the A, not a C though. Um, but we'll get to that one in a minute. So, it's another really awesome chord progression to just like, you know, just like create melodies over and express over. Because again, it's a super expressive chord progression. You know, if you think of um, the, uh, the the Budokan guitar solo, which is one of my favorite John guitar solos of all time, where he, uh, well, I'll do a backing first. So the backing is this. <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous i messed up the intro but that's okay uh it's just gorgeous the use of the melodies that john's playing over top and the way the chords are just kind of like cycling it's just heavenly and that's another one of my favorite john chord progressions it's just and again it's really nice to kind of like you can again do the sorts with it uh and jimmy hendrix up you can do so much with these chord progressions and again it's it's heavily based on melody you know these chord progressions are not complex there's no kind of like crazy kind of sevenths or whatever chords or added chords you know it, it's it's simple majors and minors it's what's going on. It's what's going on over the top that's important, you know. Um, you know, over that E, you've got all sorts of notes you can use to start a melody with. You know, you've got all the notes in the chord and notes outside the chord that fit in the key. So you can do all sorts. You know, I'm not going to sing because that's not going to be nice for anyone. But um, but yeah, so you can do so much with these. It's just insane. And again, that is just another one of my favourite chord progressions that John does. I could have lied, wet sand. She looks to me as an F sharp, but it's the same pattern. And it sounds, it don't, just like that, you know, it sounds nice when you shift it around keys. So you can go, and he, he does that in uh, uh, She Looks To Me. He, he moves it from F sharp to, uh, is it A? Um, I can't remember now, I think it's D, but I forget. Uh, I haven't played that in a long time. But, um, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, that was wrong, but you know, but it's just nice to move it around. And again, it, there's just so much room for expression with it. You can do so much. Before the beginning as well. It, it's kind of, it, it, you know, it's the same chords as before the beginning, but that's slightly different. It goes from E to D, G, and then, and then to C. Look what you're doing, Dave. Okay, uh, but again, it's the same kind of chords, just a different pattern, but so cool. I mean, and again, you can mess around with it. You, you know, instead of going from E to G, you can go E to G, uh, E to D to G, and then C. 
you can do multiple incantations of these four chords. You can do so much. You can do it where you don't go to them all the time. You can go E, D, back to E. You can move around these four chords and create like just landscapes of, of, of stuff to write melodies and play uh, melodies over and just express over. It's just limitless. It really is. You can just go so far with these things. It's amazing. They're just lovely, simple chord progressions that just let you express over and create melodies over and ex you just get out what's in. You know, they're just awesome. Again, there's nothing complex in them, but that's what's gorgeous about them. It's just simplicity at its best. And jo again, John knows this. When he's writing songs for the Chili Peppers, he knows his role. Much in the same way John uh, Flea knows his role, Chad knows his, and Anthony knows his. And that's why they work, I feel, as, as such a great band when they're writing and recording. is because they all know what they've got to do. You know, obviously that kind of started to go a little bit out the window in By The Way when John was basically taking over everything and doing everything. And we're doing this and we're doing that and we're doing the other. And he kind of lost perspective of the whole idea of band. And, um, but like, you know, Stadium Arcadium, Californication, uh, Blood Sugar Sets Magic and Mother's Milk, they were a kind of, a, you know, that's a, By The Way is the exception to Roy. It's still a great album, but there is that thing of like, you know, it's very heavily John. You know, it really is. But uh, that aside, that's another reason why, again, it works so well is they know their their jobs in the, in the band. You know, they know what they are. You know, they, Flea knows he's the bass player and he's got to do, he's got to move it. You know, he's the bass, he, along with Chad, they're the driving force of that band. And John knows what he's got to do to fill it out over the top. And Anthony knows his role as a vocalist and singer. You know, um, it, it's just, that's cool. Is something worse than being in a band with people who don't know their role and they have the delusions of like you know they are this this and this, you know you know you, there's nothing worse than a lead guitarist who thinks he's the bass player and the drummer and the lead guitar a lead singer as well, you know it, it doesn't work at that point in time you know everyone's got their job and that's what they do, okay so anyway, so that's another chord progression, E minor, G major, D major. C major, and again, if you have to before the beginning, it's D, D, uh, E minor, D major, G major, and C major. Which again is another great, awesome chord progression. And again, you can move it all around. You can go uh, E minor, C major, D major, G major. It's it's limitless, people of achieve. You know, the, the the sky's the limit when it comes down to this kind of thing. Okay, so, uh, I've got them all written down, by the way, people of achieve down there. So, if you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm just looking at a bit of paper. So, um, the next chord progression is the outro of Wet Sand and also the jam from Throw Away Your Television. So, we're going to do this in A minor. So, now we've gone from D minor, E minor, now we're going to A minor. Okay, so, this progression is F major, G major and A minor. And John uses this a lot in his solo stuff. There's wet sand. There's all, sort, uh, there's all sorts of different places you can hear this chord progression. And it works so well as a build up. And again, expression is just out the, out the roof with this one. find why my pedal board's cutting out. I need to find which lead it is that's doing that. Anyway, uh, actually, I wonder if it's that one. Anyway, I will do that after the video. Not right now. But that's another progression that's so simple, but just lets you emote, again, get melodies out, get what's out, it, uh, gets what's in, out, if that makes any sense. And again, just simple. And again, you can do it all different kind of like speeds. <laughs> You've got so much thing again two note things 
Do it on the next octave. There's so much you can do with this chord progression. It's just, I mean, and we're only, this is like the fourth chord progression I'm showing and there's just so much in these, you know, and again, you can do Jimi Hendrix kind of thing. <laughs> stuff to do with it you know simple three chords it's just amazing it's so cool it really is they just again like i say sky's the limit it really is just go what you do go nuts it's really really cool another chord progression i didn't write down but i am going to talk about quickly now while we're in the key of a minor is the californication intro jam now for that one what flea and john did they just cycled over an a minor and an f major so it would go so if I create a loop of this one. This is what they do. Slane Castle stuff, every uh, Californication jam, that's what they did. Cycle over those two chords, and it's so moody, but it's so nice. I mean, it is th that is the two chords of Californication, uh, A minor and F major, uh, but I can't play it because copyright. Uh, the big C. Anyway, um, so yeah, so... Um, but again, it's just simple. But again, there's a lot of room for melody and expression. You know, you're, it's so hard to get tired of playing over these progressions because you can always find something new in them. It's like, oh, I've never done that before. Where did that come from? You know, it's And again, if you're writing a song and you're using these chords to write a song with, you can always find different melodies. There are countless melodies that are yet to be discovered. You know, not necessarily chord progressions, I don't feel anymore. I mean, there's, there's still certain chord progressions that kind of like, you know, oh, I've never thought of doing that. But invariably it's more melody you know melodies kind of like sound make things sound differently you can play the same chords in uh which i'll talk about in a minute uh for, to a song and have a different melody and all of a sudden it's not that song you know uh it's really really cool and again that's that's no excuse i mean that that's a lot of songs you know it's not just chili pepper songs that f g and a pattern not necessarily the key but the pattern there's a lot of songs that follow that pattern that um that are all all different and different genres as well you know we're not just talking rock and and blues and and whatever it, it's, it's all sorts of stuff it's, it's crazy so and again that that pattern the a minor and f is so nice to play over again it's so moody i mean that's a it's so dark sounding and again you just play one note and it, it, it just find your way through that and it, it, it really gets inside you and if it gets inside that's really good because it'll help bring things out it's really cool so that's another chord progression that i really like people to achieve so just to recap so far we've got this one which is which is just gorgeous that's, uh, and then we've got this one again 
just changing one chord around. Instead of doing the D, start on the B, the B flat. It's just like, oh, simply gorgeous, I tell you. And then uh, we've got this one. And again, it's just so sad and heartbreaking, but at the same time uplifting. It's just weird. It's so cool. Uh, so that's another one. Uh, we've got the before the beginning. Again, which is, again, awesome. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Then we've got, uh, say, the throwaway television, uh, wet sound outro. Which is amazing. And again, the Californication Jam. There's so much you can do with these things. And there's, they're nice chord progressions to jam with your friends as well. Like, if you're just getting together in a jam session, break out one of these chord progressions and just play them. And they become almost hypnotic. Like, you know, if you're doing that Californication thing, you can see why John and Flea went off on these long extended jams with these chords. Because it gave them so much room to to and fro. It's, you know, just doing that. You know, let people take turns just expressing over it. Find the way. You, know, you can do that for hours, and I have, and it's great fun. Uh, I really do it. Like you know, recommend a lot of these core just or all of these core progressions. Just go away, play with them, get them on a looper, or get go to a friend's house and jam them for hours. You you can just find so much in them. It's just yeah, like I say, sky's the limit. Stop saying that, Dave. You're repeating yourself. Okay, so moving on to the next chord progression. We're going to talk about Black Summer now, and this is a really awesome chord progression. I love this progression. So we've got E minor, G major, and it's just the first half of Black Summer. We're not going to go heavily into it. D major and A major. And again, this is a very well used John progression. So much with it again it's a very melodic progression that again you can do tone note stuff with yes again absolutely limitless but this is a really awesome progression and it's wonderwall Just in a different key. If you capoed it, it's just, it's Wonderwall. Yeah. If I play it in F, sh uh, it's F sharp, right? Yeah. It's the same chords as Wonderwall. And again, this is the thing. These progressions that John's using are, are in in millions of songs, but it's how John adds his twist, spin, the Frusciante thing on it that makes it him. You know, if you were to do Wonderwall like that. It no longer sounds like Oasis. Because it, it isn't. You know, it, that's that's those chords. That's no, that's the Noel chords. These are the John chords. You know, so it's, it's how he uses these progressions that have been around forever and a day in a different way. And also John finds his own sense of melody because everyone's got a different sense of melody. So John will find his melodies in it. Noel found his. You know, Noel's will be different to John's. John won't think of Noel's. Noel won't think of John's. It, it, and that's what makes it cool is you can take these progressions and you'll find your own things in them instead of just kind of like regurgitating kind of so to say. You know, there'll be a certain level of that because everything's been done near enough. But you can always find different ways. It's really, really cool. So um, that's another progression that's really, really nice to play. It's really nice in E minor. Again, the, the Black Summer's uh, in E flat, but technically E minor because it's basically the same place, but that's because uh, I'm an idiot guitarist and can't figure out the other way around. But then you can do so much with it. You can... These, these chord progressions don't have to be slow. All of a sudden you got like a pop punk tune, you know, uh, do it really kind of like picky. You 
got a different thing altogether. It's no longer just that John Fashanti thing. Um, you can you can even do it like really heavy. <laughs> There's all sorts you can do with these progressions. They span genres. These progressions do not just sit in the realms of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You can do so much with them. And so many bands use these progressions in all different genres. You know, you, you name it, you can reggae it. You know... do everything with these progressions it's not just limited to that thing I i'm using an example of john because obviously this is where i learned them and this is the style i enjoy playing the most is that john for shanty jimmy hendrix style i adore it to bits so that's how i use them that's how i play them because i love it but you can do it in so many different ways you know uh <laughs> Again, limitless what you can do with these chord progressions. Just because all the chord progressions are found doesn't mean what you can do with them has been exhausted. You know, you can mess around with these chords for, you know, forever and a day. And again, it's Wonderwall. It's also, uh, do you know what I mean by Oasis? Well, it's same chords. But um, that's the thing, you know, and, and it's countless other songs as well. That chord, that, that pattern. If you're, if you're an E minor, E minor, G major, D major, and A major, it's uh, the chorus to Alive by Pearl Jam. It's the chorus to Man in the Box by Alice in Chains. You know, it's, it's so many other songs. But again, it's how those songwriters put their mark on it that makes it different. You know, Al you wouldn't think for one second that the chorus to Man in the Box is the same chords as Black Summer. It's even in the same tuning because Alice never play out of E flat. So Black Summer's first part of chords will fit Lane Staley's... Uh, and Jerry Control's vocals, excuse me, over it, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm, that's terrible singing, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, with Alive by Pearl Jam, it's just... <laughs> yeah, I can't sing it because I'm scared of copyright. But, I, well, that's why I was kind of like going, I'm trying to make it sound like I'm some kind of goblin. Uh, that's hiding in the bell tower. Anyway, moving along. But again, do yeah, you, know, you can mess around with these score progressions forever in a day, and you will always find something new in them. It's so cool. Okay, so uh, moving on to uh, well, we're going to move on to the last two now. I'm going to talk about because uh, I could talk about this all day, and if I did talk about this as much as I want, this video would probably be about 20 years long, and. Uh, I don't think you would appreciate that one, people tube. Anyway, so the last chord progression we're going to talk about today is this one. Well, second to last, but it kind of ver merges with the last chord progression. So this is the next one. Which is Carvel. I'm doing it in D minor again. I like I like D. John likes D minor, and it always has that kind of John Fashanti s kind of vibe. But it's Carvel. It's also uh, the uh, outro jam to uh, By the Way at Slane Castle. You know, it's and it's just these three chords, and they're just again they work so well. It's also um, you can do a lot of two note stuff with it. Again, very John. Again, though, if you if you play it outside of that, it's also a it's a Ramones song. You know, it's 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 ace. It's so cool how you can just like take a chord progression that's so stereotypically John Frusciante, stick on a distortion pedal, play it faster. You got a punk song. So cool. Um, same chords, different attitude, different feel. Love it. Anyway. They just love music. Isn't it the best thing in the world? Anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's another chord progression. But you can extend this one. So if you think of uh, Untitled Number 11 by John, 
you can then go into this progression, which is F major, C major, and well, and then so on and so forth. John actually goes to a G major, G minor there, and a D minor, which again is another John thing to do. Which actually I haven't written this one down. I'll talk about this one in a sec. So this isn't the last chord progression, but you can go. This chord progression here, this F major, C major, D minor, B flat, that's under the bridge, you know, and it's ca it's countless other songs as well. This is probably one of the most uh, widely used chord progressions known to man. It really is. Uh, I call it the T uh, progression because it goes, starts here, and then goes up, and then goes across, and then goes across the other side. So it's like this. So it's, it looks like a T to me. So, and again, it's used in a million songs. It's under the bridge. Uh, it's, um, um, When I Come Around by Green Day. It's uh, Here I Go Again by Rainbow. It's countless other songs, you know. It, and again, it's all about how those different songwriters uh, come up with different melodies and different ways of using these chords. You know, it's really, really cool. I'd love to play some examples, but I can't because of you know what. Anyway, stop talking about that, Dave. It's depressing. Uh, but again, there's so much room for Jimi Hendrix expression and John's expression over these chords. I mean, you can do so much with this. and hours of just kind of like just getting it out it's it's so cool so um so another progression yeah i'll just going to talk about this one really quick so f major c major <laughs> g minor and d minor and again this is very very this is a very somber scale uh, progression <laughs> you know and uh, it's abba sos you know <laughs> it's again it, but it's so cool. But you do it in so many different ways and it, it just got, you know, it's just so expressive. You know, and, and John, a lot of these chord progressions you're hearing a lot of Chili Peppers songs because they just, they just lend, you can do so much with them. You know, you, you, Noel Gallagher used a lot of his chord progressions over and over again, because you can always find something new over an existing chord progression. You know, you can play it in a different way. You can find a different melody. You can have a different tempo. You can have different uh, guitar parts over it. You can do you can different bass lines, different drum patterns, different vocals. You can, yeah, it, it's just unreal. It really is how far you can take these things. It's so cool, it really is. And uh, it's really just down to your, you know, where you want to go with it more, more than anything. I mean, I, I love playing in that John Fashanti style. That yeah, which comes from Jimi Hendrix, which comes from Curtis Knight. Um, and then God knows where he learned it from. Um, it's just cool. There's just so much to go on with here. Yeah, from these progressions, it's so cool what you can do. So, um, so yeah, there you go, Poopertube. That's some of my favourite John Frusciante chord progressions. And hopefully a bit of an explanation why I like them so much. Again, it's just simple. And again, I, I'm a big advocate for simple. I've, I'm kind of not interested in kind of like trying to reinvent the wheel and come up with something extremely kind of complex. I want to use what I love, like simple chords, and then create something over the top of that that then can express things. Like I said, I don't like when... I'm not able to express through the guitar because that feels kind of wrong to me. That's where I want to be. That's what I want to do with the guitar is I want to be able to use it to to sing uh, when I can't. And, you know, it, it, it's more of a voice than I am. And I want that that way. I don't want it to just be kind of like, you know, 
words because music hits harder uh, in some ways i feel you know words have a have a real smash in the face sometimes but i always feel music can hit you harder you know and but again you know it's just my opinion on that one but um yeah, I don't know, Poochie, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been something in it that you can kind of take away and is in informative, at least. You know, and again, if you, you know, like I say, all these core progressions I spoke about today, there's so much fun, you know, there's so much fun to just sit and play around with and just kind of express over and, and just learn and just kind of go with, you know, make mistakes over so you don't, you know, so you won't make them again. Like, learn through them as well. It's, it's just, you know, there's no limit to this. There really isn't. It's, you know, it's just where you want to go with it and they will take you there it's just gorgeous it really is and again simplicity I, I i'm a big advocate for simplicity if you want to do complex stuff cool that's very cool but for me i don't really like it i'm not really that interested in doing like you know ridiculous i'm not trying to reinvent the wheel i'm not interested in doing that kind of thing uh, i'm not interested in kind of like you know pushing the boundaries i'm i'm interested of of that kind of thing i'm interested in pushing boundaries of like you know how can i make this like how can i get at what in out through this you know how can i make people feel what i'm trying to uh, 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 explain if that makes any sense whatsoever you know how can this say this you know um and how does it how can it make people understand or or, or make people feel happy when they're not or, or or make them remember somebody who's no longer with us or, or whatever how can i get this across and it's it's really important for me to be able to do that with music and i don't feel i can yet it's not good enough in my opinion but again being my own worst critic it probably never will be but that's okay um because i don't ever really want to stop pushing for that if that makes any sense i like i i want to be able to do that for us just go push up no it's not good enough Dave. do it again do it again do it again you need to try harder you need to deep dig deeper and and, and pull out you know the guts of it so to say uh and just try and get it out there like i said it's really important for me to get across to people what i'm trying to say with my guitar playing you know it's not just me mindlessly playing over it i'm not doing it for that reason i'm not soloing because i'm just trying to show off you know which is um what some people think you know from comments i've got over the years that's what some people think it's just thinking oh you're just showing off and you're just going off on these massive long tangent guitar solos and it's a bit you know, whatever that's not why i do it and if that's the way you see it that's I can't do anything about that, but that's not why I'm doing it. But mostly people like that will never understand anyway why I do it because that's the way they perceive it and they will not be shaken from their belief, which is, again, fine. That's If that's what they want, that's cool. It's, but I'm not playing for people like that. You know, I'm playing for people who do get it and who do want to feel, you know, if that makes any sense. You know, if, if people are just kind of out there just cause, and they just want to see shredding, uh, I got a comment once saying like, you know, oh, you're useless compared to a shredder you play too slow was the comment or something like that and it's like well if that's the, if, if that's what you want to see just go on watching Bay Malmsteen you know if you, if that's all you want to hear and see is shred then go over there why are you watching somebody who plays slow but again that's a different story altogether that's a different video altogether talking about what people like you know I haven't got any bad feeling towards people who do that I my bad feeling comes is when they try and force their opinion on me that I'm doing something wrong you know, that's not it. You know, you can have your own opinions, but trying to force it on other people is just wrong. You know, I, I I love this guitar. I don't really like that guitar. Well, you should because I do. It's like, well, what? Give over. Don't make any sense. Um, you should never, you know, your opinion is your opinion. And it really only ever matters to you. What matters is is other things, you know. It, it, anyway, that, that isn't relevant today. But yeah, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent like I do. Uh, but yeah, it's... Like I say, when I play over these progressions, like the one in the intro jam, that was in D minor, by the way, uh, the intro jam. Um, that was kind of using uh, kind of like progression one and the last progression we just spoke about, uh, kind of combined. Um, but when I go off on these things, like I say, I'm not using it as a vehicle to show off. That's not why I'm doing it. You know, and I've, I've spoke about this a lot. It, it, it's my intention to kind of like get this music to people who it can make feel better if they're not feeling great or give them hope when there isn't any or just make them like say remember happier times if it's a bad time or make them feel happier if they are happy you know just make it my i want to help people with with music because it, it helped me you know 
without music, I wouldn't be here now. If I if I didn't find the guitar when I found the guitar, I wouldn't be here talking to you now, people with tube. It's as simple as that. You know, some people might say oh, it's a bit melodramatic. It's not. That's my life. That's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, I found the guitar and it gave me a purpose, and I love it. For it, it saved me. Simple as that. Uh, so I want that when I play a guitar. I want me to be able to do that for other people who, who might be in the same situation I was in or even if they're not in the same situation I was in and they just need uh, just a, a time just a second away or, or a minute away you know that's the idea I'm, I'm not doing it to kind of like hey look at me you know, it's not who I am you know and it's not why I do this it's not why I do 40 minute long improvised pieces of music you know, I, I'm not doing it to go, hey, look at me, look what I can do. It's not about that. It's about getting this music that's in me out and to you people. And hopefully in the process of that, kind of like it'll make um, you feel better. It's nothing to do with me. It's to do with the music. I am just here to, as, as a conduit, as, as a marionette to music. That's all I am. You know, I've got, you know, I've got the strings attached to me. Music has hold of the, whatever you call it, the bar at top. And it's, it's, funneling it through me and it's it's allowing me to express my feelings inside through you know through it and it's just it's just channeling it you know I, it's nothing to do with me i'm i'm not i'm not special music special i'm not special thing here you know it's music that's coming you know how it's projecting it, it you know that is that is it it's nothing to do with me it's it's really not um you know, I, I I'm just grateful that I I'm able to do it. You know, what I mean, I'm I I just I love the fact that I can do that. It's really hard to think of the words, but um, but yeah, maybe I don't know. I don't know. It's like a waffle, but uh, it doesn't feel like it. But yeah, I, that's what I want though. Is when I play the guitar, I want it to go out to people who need that music at that point in time. Um, you know, and it's not going to get everybody, and that's fine. It can't. It's impossible anyway. That it, you can't do that. You know, there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like what you do. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't like what you sound like, or your tone, or your choice of notes, or you, you play too slow, or whatever. You know, there's always going to be somebody like that. And it, you know, if they don't like it, that's their problem. Do not make it yours. You know, um, you know, people, a lot of people have spoke about my obsession with John Fashani, saying, "Don't you think it's a bit unhealthy?" No, I don't. It's never felt that way to me. And John's basically, you know, like I say, I always say he's my biggest inspiration. He, he gives me inspiration when there I don't have any, you know, and he, he's the one who really kind of like his music has helped me so much over the years. It's, it's really hard to just kind of go like, you know, yeah, that's unhealthy. It was never unhealthy. You know, it's, it's been the thing that's kept me going more than anything, you know. So I don't, I don't know what part of that is unhealthy. I really don't. But anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video, people too. I'm going to get off now and stop waffling at you. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there's something you can, you can kind of take away and kind of mess around with. And even if you don't like John Fashanti, mess around with these chord progressions with a looper or with your friends. It's good fun. It really is. You can just just get lost in them for hours and hours and hours. They're just so easy to emote over. And again, they're simple, and that's the point. Again, big advocate for simplicity. Anyway, enough waffle, Dave. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video, people too. If you like what I do here on this channel, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Link to that is in the description box below, as well as a link to my band camp where you can listen to music, uh, my music on there. Uh, please consider buying an album or, or, or a song. Again, really helps me out. There's, like, there's also a link to my Teespring as well, which has got merch, which hopefully I have more on there by now. If not, hmm. Anyway, Teespring's acting the go. Either way, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I'll see you again. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Goodbye now.